Hello and welcome to module two of Computer Science 340. This module is going to be about building an array list from scratch. Now there's a couple of reasons we're gonna look at this. One, because it's something that you've all used in Java a lot, and so I think it's important to understand how it works. Now I've already said a couple of times, I think, that an array and an array list is basically the same data structure. The array list is just using an array underneath and providing you some like convenience methods on top of that. And so we're going to see how all of those work and build the convenience methods ourselves, kind of from scratch using just an array as a starting point. It's important to understand how the things you use work in computer science, I think. And also some of the things that we're going to talk about are going to apply to all the other data structures we look at as well. So for instance, how do you make a data structure that can store any type of data in it, whether it's integers or strings or doubles or whatever. Also, we're gonna talk about how some of the um, algorithms that you need to use when using an array or an array list work. Like for instance, how do you insert into the middle of an array? How do you expand an array that's full? We'll build algorithms to do all of those kinds of things and you'll see how efficient or inefficient those things are. That'll serve as a place to compare to when we look at things like linked lists and search trees and the other uh, data structures that we get to. So let's get started building this array list. All right, so let's start building this thing. I've started a file called dynamiclist.java. I didn't want to call it ArrayList because then it might get confusing as to whether we're using the real ArrayList or the thing that we're making. So we're going to call ours DynamicList. Dynamic because we can add things to the end of it even if it's full, as opposed to a regular array in which you can't do that. So let's begin. I think that we should start building this from scratch. I thought about just giving you completed code and walking you through it, but I think it's easier to see how something like this comes together if you sort of build it up from scratch. So let's start by thinking about what needs to be stored inside of the class. Well, the array list is going to be managing an array for us, so it kind of stands to reason that we're going to need some kind of array. Now for now, we're going to build it just storing strings. We'll look in the next lesson in this module at how we can get it so that it can store any type of data, be it a string or an integer or another array or what have you. But for now, let's just make it sort of hard code it to be using strings. And we'll call it maybe just array. Then we need one more thing, which is how many items are in the array. Now you might think that the array itself can keep track of that because in Java, you know, you can do this thing where you say array.length to figure out how many things are in the array. But the way we're actually going to do it is we're going to keep track of two things. We're going to keep track of how big the array can possibly hold, what its like total capacity is, and then we're also going to keep track of how many things are actually in the array. Because if you think about it, with an array list, you can create an array list that can store up to 100 items, but it might only have two of them in at the start. So the array.length is going to be the capacity, how big this thing can get, and we're also going to store how many things it actually currently has inside of it. I'll call that the size. Next, we're going to need a constructor. So let's go ahead and make a constructor for this thing. The way that ArrayList works is if you don't pass any arguments to the constructor, then it initializes the underlying array to hold 10 items. So let's go ahead and do ours the same way. We'll say array is equal to a new array of strings of size 10. And then we're going to set the size not to 10. That's the number of things it could hold, but we're going to set to zero because that's the number of things that it's currently holding right now. So, so far, all we have is an array where we keep track of how many things are currently in it. And then we have a constructor that initializes that reference to refer to a new array of strings with a zero size. It will be kind of easy to do this now, so we might as well. We can add another constructor and the array list that comes with Java also has this, where we take in the initial capacity of it so that if you are building an array list and you know it's gonna be a big one, you can put in like 10,000 or something and it'll initialize the array to hold 10,000 items as its maximum capacity, even though again, it's gonna start with actually zero items. So we can do ours as well. That'll just make it initialize it to a new array of strings of capacity size and still set our size equal to zero. 
All right, the method that maybe comes to mind next as the one that you're going to be using a lot would be the add method. Now the add method in a array list takes an item and it adds it by default to the very end of the item. You can also specify where it should go, but let's start with the basic one right now. You might say void add, and we're going to add a new string into the array list. Now, how do we do this? Let's think about it for a sec. At this point, we'll have an array list that's possibly empty. Let's say we have the same thing where the capacity of the array is equal to 10, but the size, what we have so far, is actually equal to zero. Then we have a situation like this where we have lots of slots with nothing in them so far. Now what we're going to do is we're going to want to put something into the next available one. So what code would we do to do that? We have this thing item, which we want to put into the array. Well, we need to know what index the next slot that's open is. And we can use the, um, I didn't draw, oh, I did draw enough. Okay, we can use the size variable to, to know that, right? Because right now size is zero and the next available slot is in fact zero. So we should be able to do something like this, where we say array at whatever the size currently is right now is equal to item. If we do that, it will put this item that we passed in in the next available slot. So let's go ahead and put that in. Okay, so we'll do something like that. We'll say array at this size is equal to item. That should put it into place. And there's one more thing that we have to do, of course, which is to increment size. Because now if we had zero items, we now have one. If we had seven items, we now have eight. Hopefully that makes some sense. We have one potential issue, which is what happens when the array gets full, but we're not gonna worry about that for right now. We're just gonna get sort of the basics of this up and running first, then come back and worry about edge cases like that when the array is full. All right, another method that we're going to need is to be able to get things out of the array list again. So with array list, this is done with this method get, which takes the index of the item you wish to get and it returns the thing back to you. So this is gonna be pretty easy in this case. We're just gonna return whatever the array has at that particular index. That is pretty easy. Again, we have a potential issue where we could pass an index that is too big or too little, and that will give us some kind of errors. But for right now, we're going to add those in later on. There's one more method that I think we should add at this point, which is the clear method. That just erases the contents of the array or sets it back in such a way that it is empty again. And the way that that looks in the array list class is like this, public void clear, taking no arguments. Now this is a tricky method actually. Take a minute to think about how we might go ahead and do this. It's actually probably easier than you're making it. All I will argue that we have to do to make this happen is this one line of code, size equals zero. Now that's sort of non-intuitive for a lot of students, but let's look at the drawing pad again and see why this works. So let's say our array is mostly full. Let's say size is equal to eight right now and we have things inside of here. Now you might think we need to like do something like delete the cells or overwrite them with something. And you certainly could do that, but all you really have to do to make this work is to erase the size by setting it back to zero like that. Now what that does is it leaves all of these things in here, but they're not going to ever come out again. Once we have error checking in our get method, it should be impossible to access slot three because there's only zero items. Likewise, the next time we call this add method, like let's say we add in, I don't know, what's the letter we don't have, C. If we add this in, where is it going to go? It's going to go right where it should go in slot zero because it's the only item in, and that will change the size to one. Now the only item that should be accessible is this one in slot zero because the size is one. And if we wanna add another item after this, it's going to go over top of the X. So we can leave all this data in here. It's not really going to hurt anything. You can't delete cells from an array. The best you can do is overwrite them with some value like a null. 
there might be some advantage to do that for like the garbage collector, but there's no real need or reason that you have to do it that way. So this does actually work. Just setting the size back to zero will clear our array list back out. And in the name of simplicity, we're just gonna leave it like that for now. Let's actually go ahead and make one more change, which is to throw the exception that needs to be thrown from this get method. So there's two things we basically have to do to do that, to make that happen. One is to announce that the method could throw an exception. And we'll do that by saying it throws a new index out of bounds exception. Uh, that basically says, hey, anyone calling this method, just so you know, this might happen. If you pass in a bad argument, you could get an index out of bounds exception. Then we have to actually do it. To make that happen, we just check if the index is either less than zero or the index is greater than or equal to the size. We can verify that it should be greater than or equal to because if the size is one, the only item that's available is actually slot zero. So if it's equal to size, then that's also a problem. In that case, what we're going to do is we're going to throw a new index out of bounds exception, just like that. Now we have that little check in place so that anytime anyone calls this get method with a index that doesn't make sense, either it's too little or it's too big, it's going to cause an error and throw that index out of bounds exceptions back to whoever called us. So this is, I think, a good first attempt at this. We are storing an array. We have two constructors that initialize that array. I hope that thunder is coming in over the mic. It's uh, quite a stormy evening right here when I'm making this video. So we are making the array, initializing the size. We let the user add for right now only to the end of the array. And then we have also this method that goes ahead and gets the data back out. And lastly, we have this clear method. So like I said, that's a pretty good start. Now let's go ahead and start testing it. This is always a good idea. You should never write a whole you know, bunch of code without testing it as you go. So I made another file called dynamic list test where we're gonna make a dynamic list. Let's call it names and set it equal to a new dynamic list. Let's use our default constructor first. Then we should be able to do something like names.add. Let's say I use my go-to generic names, names.add Alice and names.add Bob. And now we should be able to print those back out. If I say names.get sub zero and names, so let's just copy this, names.get of one, this should print out Alice and Bob. So we're gonna start with this little simple test right now. So let's make sure that works. Java C dynamic list dot Java and also dynamic list test.java, and then we're gonna read, run just the test one. Test. And we get Alice and Bob back out. One thing that we should put in our method, our, our class that I forgot about is a length method, method, Java. Now I get confused about whether it's called length or size, so I just looked it up, and the one that comes with ArrayList is called size. So let's return that back out. We can just say return size. So then we'll go ahead and in our test, go ahead and print out the size of our array that we're keeping track of as well. So this should now print Alice, Bob, and two. Let's test if that worked. Run that and then run dynamic list test. Alice, Bob, and two. So that's good. So that's a good testing point. Let's also actually throw in clear. So if we go ahead and say here names.clear and then print the size again, then for us it should print zero the second time. Let's make sure that that actually works. Compile and run it, and it does seem to work. And then one last thing we need to test, which is our index out of bounds exception. So if I add this line of code to the end of this, because we've already cleared it, after printing the size of zero, calling get of zero should cause us the index to be thrown. 
the index out of bounds exception to be thrown, I should say. And that does in fact happen. So that's all good. So that's a good start. All right, that uh, storm you heard actually knocked out my power. And so I had to wait a little bit before coming back to this, but let's open this up again and see where we're at. So we've added these things so far. The next thing that I think we should work on is making it so that we can resize the array. Because right now we have a potential problem with our code if the user of this class calls the add method multiple, multiple times and fills up the array, if they continue calling, it's just going to crash. Of course, what the array list should do instead is resize the array when it gets to be a certain size. So we're gonna have to do something like this where we say if the size of the array that we have already is equal to the capacity, which is the array.length, if that happens, then really we need to resize the array. So let's talk about how that's gonna work. All right, so let's say we have an array that's filled like this. Right now, the size is equal to 10, and also the capacity is equal to 10. What we need to do is we need to add to the end of this somehow, but there's not actually a way to like add to the end of an array after it's filled. There's really nothing we can do in that regard. We can't like call upon some array method to do that. We have to kind of do it ourselves. Oops. And the way that we can do that is to just make a whole new array and fill it in. So basically step one of this algorithm is make a new array. So right now this one is called array. So what we have right now is array being a reference to this array in memory. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a new array. Maybe I'll call it temp and it is going to be bigger than the old one. So if the old one was size 10, we can talk about how we're going to do it, but we can make it, let's say, twice as big. And so this one is size 20. I don't know if there's actually 20 spaces, but that's the idea. So we make a new array. Then what we need to do is we need to copy the things from the original array down into the new one. So all of our 10 slots in the original array, which is filled, need to be copied down here. So we'll do 297, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to 18. Now there are spots available at the end of the array though. The next thing we need to do is we need to change the references. So again, this is where it's kind of important where you understand what is happening with references and things like we talked about last time. So now array is no longer going to refer to this original array, it's going to refer to the new one, the one that's the same as temp. Then the next thing we have to do is also to change the size, rather the capacity. Now this is going to be 20, and we're keeping track of that with our array.length, so we don't really have to worry about that too much. So hopefully that makes sense. That's the steps of this algorithm, basically. In order to expand the array, you have to make a whole nother array, copy the data down to it one by one, and then change your reference so that it refers back to the new array that you just made rather than the original one. So now let's look at that from a code point of view. What we're going to do is we're going to, when the size got to be the same size as the array.length, we're going to make our new array. So we'll go ahead and do that like this. We'll say string array temp equals new string of what should our new size be. I said double and that I think will work pretty well. So if it was size 10, now it becomes size 20. If it was size 100, it will now become size 200. That should work pretty well in general. So I'll make the size of it that we were, are requesting size times two. Then we need to copy the data over, which we can do with a little for loop. I can say something like for int i equals zero through the current size that the original array, array is going up by one each time, we're going to copy into temp sub i from array sub i. That should copy all our data over. And then the last thing we have to do that I talked about was to set this into the array field. So now this array variable is being updated so that it's equal to this temp one that was created. So that when we get down here, now we're not adding to the original array anymore, we're adding to the new array. 
So let's see if that works. I guess the way that we can test that would be basically to make an array uh, list that's quite small and then add a bunch of things to it. So rather than just use the default size of 10, let's go ahead and actually make it quite small. Let's make it just size two. And then let's add some more names to it. Uh, I'll just make this simple for now. I'll say Bob, one, two, three, four, five. So if we didn't have it working as we did last time, uh, then this would cause a crash or something. But right now it should print that the size of this list is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, even though we only made it size two originally. You know, just to make really, really sure that this is working, I'm gonna go ahead and put a message in here to print out what we're doing. So I'm gonna say we're resizing from size to size times two. That should let us see what's happening as we're doing this. So now I'm gonna Java compile dynamic list dot Java and dynamic list test.java together and run dynamic list test. So we resized it once from two to four, and then we resize it again from four to eight, and we get seven items in our array list once we're done. All right, now I'll take my little print line message out of here, but now we're slowly adding in the functionality that the array list gives you as opposed to the regular array. One of the things is not having to worry about how much capacity is because it'll now automatically expand when it needs to. The next thing we'll talk about is adding in the ability to add anywhere in the array list. Now with a regular array list, you can call the default add method like this, which adds to the end but there's another add method as well. And that one has a method signature that looks like this. It's still called public void add, but now the first parameter is an index and the second parameter is the thing that we're going to be adding. And what it does is it adds this item that you passed in, but it doesn't just tack it onto the end, instead it puts it at this index. So let's talk about how that's going to work. So let's say our array looks like this right now. It's size seven and it has these elements in it. And then we have the indices. I'll put them on here real quick. And then we want to call the add method and pass in an index. So let's say we pass in two for the index. And then the item that we're passing in to actually add is, I don't know, let's say just a hundred. And so we want to add a hundred, but we don't want to tack it onto the end right here. Instead, we want to put it in to slot two right here. Let's think about the steps that we would need to take to make that happen. Well, we can't just put it there, of course, because that'll overwrite the seven that's currently being stored. Instead, what we need to do is we need to knock these things down one by one to make room first and then insert into slot two. So we're going to need a for loop of sorts to put it in. So, well, really the first thing is to make sure there's room because just like adding at the end, if the thing is full, we need to do the resize operation that we just talked about first. But after that, we're going to assume that there is space at the end of this. Then we're going to need to do some kind of loop to loop from the last item all the way up to the item that we currently are. So we're gonna say something like for int i equals the last item, which is size minus one, right? Because we need to start moving starting at item six. So we're gonna set i equal to size minus one. Right here, that's the first one that needs to be moved. Then we're gonna keep going while i is greater than or equal to the index that we're moving. Because in this case, the two here, we need to move that one. That's the last one we need to scooch down a slot. And then we're gonna do i minus minus. So this for loop is kind of gonna be going backwards. Then for each step, we're going to move it from the array slot it's in to the array slot one to the right. So if you think about it, that's gonna look like this. Array at i plus one 
is equal to array i. Essentially just moving everyone down one step in the array. Then the last step of this little algorithm is to actually do the insertion and to put this new item that we got into the slot that we're going to put it because now it should be vacant. If we run through this, this would look like this. We would put the three over here. It's looking messy, but I'll just go with it. Put the 21 over here, the 11 over here, the six over here, and the seven over here. And now we have a second seven here that is redundant. That one has already been moved aside. So we can just overwrite this with the new item that's being inserted, which in this case is 100. And so I think this algorithm will work. So let's go back to the code and make that happen. Okay, so we're going to do just that. We're going to start by making sure that there's room again by saying if the size is equal to array.length, whoops, then we're going to resize the array. And because this is not really a trivial little piece of code right here, I'm going to go ahead and put this into a separate method. And I'm going to make it a private method because we don't necessarily want any old person to be resizing our dynamic list. We only want to do it inside of this class. But because I'm using it in two different places now, it'd be kind of redundant to have it be actually written out two different places. That's an important thing in programming. You shouldn't really repeat yourself. So I'm going to put this code into its own method right here, calling it resize. Oops. Do, do, do. Like that. And now I can do the same thing inside of this method, just call upon this method that already exists. So if we're full, resize, and then carry on. Now the second step of this algorithm was to move the things down by one. So just like we said before, I'm going to start at size minus one. I'm going to keep going while i is greater than or equal to the index I'm inserting into. And like we said, we're going to go down by one i minus minus each time. Then for each slot of this, we're going to say array i plus one is equal to array sub i, just like that. And then after this, we can actually go ahead and do the insertion part. So I can copy those two lines of code. Actually insert this item into the index that we gave it and then increment the size by one because we have put a new item in place. So let's test that this worked as well. I'm gonna open up our dynamic list test.java file. Whenever you're working on code, it's so, so important to be adding testing as you go, making sure that each new piece of code that you're writing is actually working the way that you expect it to. Let me just go ahead and make a test real quick. Okay, this code right here should print the names A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? Because we are adding them with the default add method, which just adds to the end. And then I printed them out in a little for loop here. So let's make sure this works first. Yes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now to test our add method, what we can do is we can add them at specific places. For instance, slot zero. If I add them all at slot zero, actually, it should serve to print them in reverse order because I'll add the A in slot zero, then I'll add the B before that in slot zero, shifting the A down. Then I'll add the zero in the, or rather the C in slot zero, shifting the BA down. Then the D will be added in slot zero, shifting the CBA down. And so I think that if everything is working right, this should print them out in reverse order. So let's see if that is actually happening. And it looks like it is. Let's just add one more test with another number. Let's say we want to add in slot three, a name like Harold. Let's see that that works. And it looks like, yeah, we have zero, one, two, three, our name Harold that got added in and then all of the rest of them. So I think that is working. Now we have the ability to add into our dynamic list, not just at the end, but in any place we feel like. The next thing I believe we should add into this is a remove method. So let me 
open up our code. I keep doing the same one. Do, 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 do. Open up our code again. What we want to have now is a method that looks like this. Public void remove an index from the array list. This is another array list method that we have. Let's think about how this one is going to work. Let's say our array looks like this now, and we want to remove an index. Let's say of our indexes, we want to remove number two again. And we're going to call this by saying remove index two. Well, let's think about what has to happen. We can't actually, like I mentioned last time, like delete a cell of an array. We can't say like array.delete and have like a cell removed. That's not a thing that arrays do. They just store all these indices. And the only thing you can do really is set those indices equal to things. And so in order to remove this, what we actually have to do is we have to scooch the items to the right of it down by one. So the six is going to be overwritten into the seven, the 11 into the six, the 21 onto the 11 and the three onto the 21. So everything is going to scooch down to the left instead of like when we added, we had to scooch down to the right. So to do this, we're gonna need another for loop. These kind of for loops can be somewhat tricky. So where we want to start, the first number we want to scooch is this number here. Number three should be scooching down to the left. So what we can do is we can say for int i equals the index that we're removing plus one. That's the first thing we want to scooch. And then the last thing we want to scooch is one less than the size, which is our last element. So we're going to say while i is less than size would do it. So as long as i is less than size, we're gonna scooch, and then when it hits seven, which is our size, we're gonna stop. And this time, we're gonna do i++ because we're gonna be going to the right. And then each iteration of this for loop is going to look similar to the last one, except instead of sending array i plus one, we're gonna set array i minus one equal to array sub i. scooching down as we go from a cell on the right to a cell on the left. That's one thing we have to do. The other thing we're gonna have to do is do size minus minus, right? Because if we have removed one item, we will no longer have seven items, we'll have six. So let's go ahead and code that up. We'll start, like I said, with our for loop, starting at index plus one going while the index is less than the size of the array and going up by one each time. Each time through, we're going to say array at i minus one is equal to array sub i. Oops. And size minus minus, I think, is the last step we need. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's test and see if it actually works or not. Now, after doing all of this, I guess we can leave it sort of the same. We can go ahead and remove an item by index. Let's say we do names.remove of one. Nope, one. Now, because these are backwards, this is confusing. Let me just do this. Okay. Let's make it even simpler and just put it the numbers, or rather the names A through H. Now B should be in slot one, and let's remove B. Let's see if this is working. No, it's not working. We have an index out of bounds exception. Index 10 is out of bounds for length 10. So I could cut this out of the video, my mistake, but I think it'll be better to leave it in. Hopefully for your confidence, you can see that even experienced programmers still mess things up, but also because I think it's a more accurate way of looking at how you'd go about building a program like this, there will be setbacks. So we have index 10 is out of bounds for length 10 on our remove method at line 50. So let's open that up. Oops. That one, this one, line 50 here. So I said that index i starts at index 
plus one. That will be two in this particular case at first because we start it with index being equal to one. I said, keep going while, uh, that's the problem. Instead of saying I less than size, I said index less than size. And index, we're not actually changing. That's the index we want to remove. That's staying at one the whole time. I meant I less than size. So that was an easy one to fix, but uh, hopefully that will be the only problem with this. Let's try this again. And it looks like B is gone. So our remove method does seem to be working. And that was a good test of it because we had to scoot a bunch of things down, all of the C through H letters. One last thing to add is searching. One thing we might want to do is to search our array list for a specific item. Now the built-in array list has this with a method called index of, it looks like this, public int index of, and then you pass in the thing that you're looking for, which I'll call target, and it should return the index of the first occurrence of that thing or negative one if it was not found. Now this is a pretty simple linear search type thing like we've talked about actually already. We're just going to start looping through our array and check each one to see if it's equal to it or not. So this shouldn't be too bad at all. Let's start with i is equal to zero. Keep going while i is less than the size of the array and go i plus plus each time. Then we're going to do our check. If the item at this array location, array sub i, is equal to target. I could do it like this with the equal sign, but that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea for the memory reasons that we talked about last time, because what equals equals does in Java is it checks if the references are the same. And what that means is whether those are referring to actually the same exact object in memory. So if we're storing strings, if we have two different strings that are storing the same characters, then equals equals will not say that they're equal because they are different memory locations. Equals equals in Java always compares the memory addresses if you're using it with references. So we do not want to use this with strings or really any other type of object most of the time. Instead in Java, we can use the dot equals method passing in target here. If it is equal, then we're just going to return this index, return i, and one mistake that people sometimes make is write this code like this and say, otherwise return negative one. But that's not really what we want to do here because then after looking at the first element of the array, we're either going to say, yes, this is the one we're looking for, or we're immediately going to say, no, it's not here. But really we can't return negative one until we've gone all the way through the array. So we don't really need an else clause at all. If this thing is not the one we're looking for, just do nothing and move on to the next one. And only after the loop are we going to return negative one because only when we've gone through all of them can we confidently say, no, it's not here. Having this method in place will actually let us do something else that would be kind of cool, which is to allow the users to remove items from the array list, not just by index, but also by value. So now I can make another version of our remove method that instead of taking the index of the thing we want to remove, it can take the item that we want to remove. And we can write this pretty simply using the two methods we just wrote. We can say int index equals index of the item. And then we can say if this index does not equal negative one, meaning if the thing was actually found, then we can remove it and we'll just call our other remove method. And if it wasn't found, then this remove method does nothing. So now we can remove by index, like remove item five from the array, and it'll go to slot five and remove that one. Or we can say remove, you know, Harold from the array, and it'll first find Harold's index and then remove from that location. So let's test those things, the index of and the remove. That's the same file. Now we can do something like say print names dot index of 
g and also do the same thing but for something that's not actually found like let's say x and then say instead of removing slot one we're going to remove c so this should first let's say print what index of g should be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then it should print negative 1, and then it should remove C. So let's see that this works. Okay, I made a mistake. Again, I could edit these out, but I'll leave them in here so you can see that typos happen to everybody. Java C, and now let's do Java of dynamic list test. And it looks like it worked. Um, it printed six. That is actually the right number. I think I just miscounted. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, G is six. Then it prints negative one because X wasn't found. And then it looks like our remove by value is working too because the C is no longer in this list. So this is a good stopping point for right here. We have worked on our dynamic list and got really most of the most important things of the array list implemented. We can make an array list, which we're calling dynamic list. We can add to it either at the end by default or wherever the heck we want to by passing in the index. And both of those will automatically resize the array when it gets full. We can get the data back out with this get method. We can clear the array again if we need to. We can remove either by index or by value, and we can also search our array list. That's probably like 90% of what you need the array list to do. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about one important limitation of this array list as we currently have it, however, which is the fact that it can only store strings right now. Next time, we're going to look at how we can fix this so that we can say our dynamic list is storing string objects or integer objects or float objects or person objects or whatever kind of object you can imagine, even ones that you haven't created yet, we can make our dynamic list store them. So that's what's up for next time.